Great Search is brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey, for helping make the Great Search happen every single week. Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering and more to navigate the DigiKey site to search for all the parts and components, and we take requests. And speaking of... Speaking what, of, we do have a week? request. We have two requests, so we're going to get to do with this one this week and one next week. So yeah. somebody posted on the forums, and they asked... Let's go to the computer. Boop. Okay. They want a latching power relay like the Omron G6C. So basically they said, look, they want a power latching relay feather wing. This is what we've got now. This is the power relay feather wing. And the power relay feather wing has a big sugar cube Omron um, relay. And, you know, you turn the relay on and it, it moves the latch, the, not the latch, the, the throw over to the other pole. And so the, the middle pad of this terminal block connects to the one or the other you know from the from the sides either the left side or the right side um and uh, that is a really nice you know high voltage friendly and we have a cutout and it's um it can handle uh pretty high voltages and high current so this is 1200 watts so it can do you know 5 10 amps of current uh for like an, a small appliance like it can definitely handle a small toaster oven or um, lamps, you know, fans, lamp, you know, uh, 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 sort of think like small heaters, um, televisions, etc. Appliances, things around your house that use uh, wall power, um, motors, etc. So this uh, feather wing, though, the the relay that it uses is a power relay, but you have to hold the pin high to keep it connected. So basically, like, if you want it to only turn on when you turn the relay on, right, you want the contacts to close to create the circuit when the relay's uh, on, you have to hold that pin high, which does use a lot of current. Um, and the alternative to a normal relay is a latching relay. And a latching relay, you don't have to hold the pin high or energize the relay. You just toggle it, and it sort of, like, clicks and latches the relay into one position, and you move another pin and it latches the relay the other direction. And we do have a um, latching relay feather wing, but it's only this mini style. So you see there's a latching and non-latching. So this one is latching and it takes uh, two pins, a set and unset pin. Um, but this relay is much smaller. This is a telecom relay. So it's only like maybe a half an amp, not, not very high power. It's like 70 watts or so compared to the other one, which is over 1200 watts. So this person had a good point though. I was like, oh yeah, you know, I never made a latching power featherweight. I should do that. I should go DigiKey and search for that because finding a latching um, feather, it's, finding a latching relay that'll fit on a feather is not necessarily easy. A lot of relays are really big. We want something that's really slim. So let's go to the overhead real fast and I'll show that. So this is, I happen to have at home a, uh, a uh, relay feather wing, so you can see it's you know it's kind of chunky, and um, this is you know about 15 and a half millimeters by 21 and a half millimeters by you know about 18 millimeters, um, and it's soldered onto this feather wing. There's a you know it's not taking up all the space. I do have a little bit of room over here, so it can be a little longer, but I really don't want it any wider because you see it's already, it's kind of getting near the edges of the feather. I want it to be uh, narrow. So let's make sure that we get one that's narrow enough that it fits onto the feather. It can be a little tall. I mean, this is, it's a sugar cube, it's chunky, but I don't want it to, I don't want it to be longer than the feather, wider than the feather ring. All right, so let's go to DigiKey. So let's go to the computer and I'll uh, I'll do the searching. Okay, so uh, let's search for relay to start. And you're like, why don't you search for latching? Because if it's latching and non-latching, I'd rather just go to the relay section and then search. So, okay, so there's power relays and signal relays. So signal relays, again, like telecom relays, they're less expensive, they're smaller, they're often surface mount, um, but they don't do high power. They do less than two amps. now. Granted that two amps is, you know, is it at low voltage or high voltage? Either way, I definitely want it to be five to 10 amps of current. 
at 240 uh, volts AC. So I definitely don't want the signal. I want the power relay. There's also solid state relays, which are going to be, they're different. I think, you know, they're not going to be latching. Um, they work in a different way and they don't work for DC voltage. So I want to make sure that this works for AC or DC. I want the mechanical relay. So let's go to the power relay section. So I have 22,000 relays. So let's go with active. Because I want only ones that are, are you know, I'm going to make a product out of this. Now, normally I would only click in stock, but because there's been so many shortages of components, I'm going to click normally stocking instead. Um, because I want to make sure it's, you know, there, there could be good ones that are just not in stock right now, but they will be in a couple of weeks or maybe a month or two. I want to find what's the best possible thing because relays are very specific. You know, they're not like, um, some components where it's like some silicon components where it's like, well, you know, the op amp or the transistor, I'll just find whatever it is that's good enough. I really, you know, when I pick the one I pick, the mechanical shape is going to be very specific and it's not going to be easy to go to a different one. So I really kind of got to like pick one and be done with it. Okay. So next up, um, the next thing that's really important is the coil voltage. So because it's going to be on a feather wing, uh, it has to be powerable from feathers and feathers are three volt logic. They get five volt power from a USB, but they can also run off of a battery. And in fact, this person who posted said they wanted to run off a battery, which is why they wanted to be latching. And the batteries, you know, they're four volts or so, but really, you don't, they can start dipping down to 3.5. So I, I don't want to require a five volt relay. I want it to be less than that. I think three volts or less to even 4.5 volts is a bit high because remember LiPo batteries, 4.2 volts is about as high as they, they get. And there's no, I don't want to risk it. You know what I mean? I want to make sure that if they want the relay to, to activate or deactivate that they can do so. So the coil voltage, I'm going to select um, 2.2 to 3 volts. You, and you'll see this really reduces the number. I, right now I think I have like six, you know, we went, went from 12,000 or sorry, 20,000 to 6,000 uh, to now it's only going to be 89 options. Okay, so um, next up, there's, you know, a couple things like, you know, coil insulation or must operate voltage, but none of these are important. So there's now two kind of coil types, right? Because this is, why, why are we here? We're here for the latching. So the next question is, do you want single coil or double coil? And I actually didn't know the difference between double coil and single coil until I had to go look for this because it usually didn't matter. But um, when I picked... Double coil is a little simpler to use. Double coil is you have two pins, and when one goes high, it the you know the relay what latches one way, and the other pin goes high, it latches the other way. All right. So each pin when you toggle it high. However, what I noticed was is that I had a lot fewer options with double coil and single coil. There's more single coil options because I think the mechanical construction is a little simpler. So I will select both, but I will note that single coil is a little easier and I'll show you how we're actually going to use it when we, when we get to use it. Okay, so the next step is, um, do we want single pull, single throw? Uh, not really, single pull, single throw means really is either connected or not connected. I like to have it be normally open, normally closed if you have two options. So I'm gonna pick the SPDTs and the DPDTs. So you can, you can have something open or close and, and they, they pick which way they want it. Um, surface mount or through hole. I don't think I'm going to find it a surface mount one, uh, but I'll, I'll leave it all selected. Okay. So going down here, um, I'm going to view the prices at 500 pieces just because relays like one relay is usually like $10 and they quickly go down in price. So I want to compare them at a reasonable price. So yeah, there, there's a couple of good options. So this one is, is sneaky. So there's this telecom relay and you're like, wow, this is surface mount, it looks pretty small. And there's 10,000 in stock, this looks great. Um, the problem is, is that I actually went and looked at the data sheet. Hold on, which hopefully will load. Uh oh, oh no, data sheet, you can do it. Okay. So when you look at the data sheet, even though it's in the power relay section, um, 
if you look at the uh, if you look at the load, the the current is five volts, five amps max, but only at low DC voltages. And and as you get higher, it definitely goes down. And so I think it it doesn't seem to. It said it was okay for AC, which is probably going to be the same as DC. But basically. It, it's, a, it's, it's a signal relay, it's not a power relay. So even that's in this category, uh, and it was like very attractive looking. Um, so the next one I looked at was the Omron one. And the reason is, it's like, well, I know Omron ones and they look pretty good. It's inexpensive, it's not in stock right now, but I know that they're normally in stock. I also looked at this TE one, although the pricing is you know, significant, like this one's 250, and then you know they get to $4 quite quickly, and I, I do have to, keep it um, price sensitive. So let's let's look at this relay. So this is a high switching current general purpose latching relay. That's kind of what I want. Um, so this one, oh, this is a confusing day sheet. Okay, so for this one, the thing I noticed was for the single winding latching type, you'll see it goes down to three volts rated, you know, 200 milliamps. Um, but if you are five volts, hold on, this, this is like the trickiest data sheet. Hold on. Sorry, this data sheet, it has like this weird page that kind of flips it. Okay, let me move this over. Okay, okay, you see it. Great. So for the double latching type over here, You'll notice that the it doesn't have a rating voltage lower than five volts, and that's why you know I was, I was having this issue where I was like, "Oh, I want the double coil because it's easier to deal with." Um, however, when I did double coil, I I didn't get to find this particular relay because only the single coil version has three volt activation. So the um, the difference in how you use it, and let's again hold on, go to. Yeah, see this data sheet, it's like wide. It's kind of an interesting data sheet. So this is this single, this is a single coil relay. This is what it looks like. So you see there's there's you know one coil and there's one pin, and then when one pin is high and one is low, um, it pulls the um, armature one way. And then when you invert it, so the other pin is high and one pin is high and the other one's low, the armature moves the other way. Why does this matter? So normally, if you have a double coil latching relay, of course you have to put a lot of current through the coil. So you're gonna have two transistors, one for each coil, to help you drive that current through the coil, right? So you have, it's basically like a solenoid. You have two power transistors of some sort, you know, enough that can uh, pass 200 or 300 milliamps. And then you can turn each one, you know, high or low uh, using that power transistor. With a single coil relay, you have to treat this like a motor. It's it's a it's kind of like a bidirectional motor. So you actually need an H bridge for this because you need to pull a lot of current through one way and then pull it a lot of current the other way. It's basically an H bridge. A little more annoying because now you need four transistors instead of two. However, it's a dollar fifty less in price and there's more options available. So you know, I'm probably gonna do that. It's not a big deal. I can, you can make an H bridge out of, you know, four transistors. It doesn't have to be a great H bridge because it doesn't have to stay on for a very long time. It doesn't have to be on long enough to latch the relay one way or the other. So it can be like a kind of like, you don't have to use the best transistors in the world. That should be good enough. And then you just have to have four uh, diodes as well as flyback diodes for um, this. But basically you have to treat it like a motor. Um, this is the single pull, single throw version and this data sheet, man, it's kind of weird. And this is the uh, double pull, double throw. So this is the one I'm actually going to get. And you can, do, I'm just going to double up. You know, I don't. It has, you know, multiple pins for some reason. I don't know why. They're they're actually inside. It's only one relay, so I don't know. Twice as much current goes through. Maybe I don't know. And then again, this sneaky. I do not like this data sheet. Okay, and then over here you can see the if it's a single um, a double coil, you see how it works inside. There's actually 
it is one coil, but it's doubled up, and then you have to kind of like pull it from the middle. And uh, that's why I guess you can't use it with three volts. This is a five volt only. Um, but I need three volts. So, you know, my decisions have kind of been made for me. Um, that's okay. This is a pretty good relay. So let's, next up, you know, now that we've decided, okay, we're going to do the H bridge. We're going to do the um, single, single coil. Let's look at the mechanics. Oh my God, this data sheet. Eh. Okay, well, these are all mechanically the same size. So this is 29 by 12.7 by 15.5. So let's go to the overhead again real fast and we'll see how this compares. So lengthwise, this one is 22 or so. And the one we're picking is about 29. So I like to sort of measure it. So it's, okay. it's going to be a little bit longer, but not, you know, it's not longer than the feather. So that's fine. And then for width, it's going to be 12.7, and this is 15.5. So it's going to be thinner. It's going to be kind of significantly thinner. It's going to be a little thinner. It's going to be skinny like that. And then for height, it's 15.5 millimeters, which is, I'll just do it here, and you'll just have to trust me. So that's, that's about 15.5. So it's actually a little bit shorter as well. So it's, a, it's basically going to be a longer, thinner, shorter version of this relay, but it'll definitely fit on the featherwing. So I'm going to order some of these samples. Um, since the three volt one isn't in stock, I'm probably going to pick up like the six volt one and then I'll just like jury rig it to, you know, get it tested and, and trying it out. Um, I'll feed it six volts and then get the mechanics set up and then I'll be able to convert it to the three volt version uh, when I finish and then do the testing uh, before I release the product. So the winner of this week's The Great Search is this Omron G5R LU1E DC3. You are the winner of this week's Great Search. Thank you. Where 